Hello once again, it's Pastor Mark here at Brant Naz, Brantford Church of the Nazarene in Brantford, Ontario. Last week I started an online feature I'm calling Take a Break with Pastor Mark, in which I field some questions from you that you submit to me and I'll try and answer them to you. This week's question that we have comes to us, just let me find it here for us right here, but this week's question is, why do some people pray to Jesus when Jesus told us to pray directly to God? Why do some people pray to Jesus when Jesus told us to pray directly to God? And it goes on to say, I get the Trinity, but th the three seem to be separate in the Bible or separated in the Bible. So kind of a two-part uh, question that we have there that I'm going to respond to. One about the Trinity of God and one about prayer and how they relate to each other. So I'm going to answer, uh, deal, deal with the first, with the part about the Trinity of God first and then uh, respond to the portion about prayer. God is, the word Trinity is not used in the Bible, or Trinitarian is not used in the Bible. But when we take the whole of Scripture together, all of the Bible together, we see where God is a triune God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, we need to understand He's not three gods rolled into one. Three distinct persons, three distinct roles, one God. One God like that. We can get a, any description that we put on, on God is going to fall short. But we can get our minds around the, the concept of Trinity and, and a couple of illustrations I'll use to try and help us do that. One is, I'll use myself for an example. I am a son to my parents. I am the husband to my wife. And I am the father to my children. So I'm son. I'm husband and I'm father. So we, we have that concept, if we can call it a trinity of three things in one being already. Uh, maybe another illustration I'll use, and we, we know they fall short. Like we said, when we try to define God, we can't fully define him. But another concept of a trinity could be the sun. The sun is three different, uh, has, can have three different parts to it. It can have its matter, it can have its light, and it can have heat. The matter burns, creating light, which creates heat. So we see three in one. So this concept of a trinity is not foreign to us and, and not strange to us. And God is portrayed in the Bible as the whole of the Bible is taken. Like I said, no, no one verse or no one reference uh, refers to a trinity of God, uh, that he is a trinity. But when we put it all together, take it all together, we see this uh, development of, of God being a trinity. Three persons, three beings, uh, three, three purposes, three, three functions, all in one. So when we look at it that way, we see where God is one. So back to our question about prayer. We, we talked about the Trinity, back to our question about prayer and how that relates to it. When we go back to our question about prayer, if we say, then if I pray to Jesus, if Jesus is God, then is it wrong to pray to Jesus? Well, the short answer on that would be no. It's not wrong to pray to Jesus. If Jesus is God and we're supposed to pray to God, it's not wrong to pray to Jesus. But let me add a but to that. Let me add a caveat to that. The strong example of the Bible is that we pray to God the Father through Jesus Christ's Son in the power of the Holy Spirit. Does that mean we shouldn't pray to Jesus? No, we even see in Acts chapter 7 where the, the martyr Stephen is being stoned and, and he calls out to Jesus and he speaks directly to him and, and he acknowledges what, what's, what's happening to him and he calls to Jesus in prayer. So we see where, where that is an example of where somebody has prayed to Jesus. What we, I, find, I stand to be corrected, but I find it interesting that in all of Scripture we don't see any examples of praying directly to the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus himself did say, when you pray, pray our Father, who art in heaven. So he's directing us to pray for our Father. But we do see the example uh, to call out to him, Come, Lord Jesus. Often in many of our, uh, not many, or some of our songs that we sing, uh, we, we sing them to Jesus. They're, they're prayerful songs. They can be sung to Jesus. But the typical normative example of Scripture is we pray to God the Father, through, through God the Son, in the power of God the Holy Spirit to do that. So as, as we move forward and look at that, there's one other aspect I want us to uh, acknowledge with that too. If we pray specifically to one aspect of the, uh, of the Godhead, 
which is what the Trinity is referred to, the Godhead. If we pray to one as aspect of that, I'm going to use a, a technical word here, but don't 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 do that, let it trip you up. We can become unitarian in our prayers. We can become, become unitarian in our prayers in that. We, we, we can just see God in a single aspect instead of seeing him in his fullness. We pray to God the Father through Jesus the Son by the power of the Holy Spirit. If we become focused on one aspect of him, we, we run the risk of doing like uh, some other religions have done where they separate God. Some even deny that Jesus or the Holy Spirit are even divine or even God himself. And then we fall into that trap of just looking at God as just simply being God the Father, he's in that way. He is one God, the Godhead, but three persons in that one God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So, back to our bottom line question again. Is it wrong to pray to Jesus? No. But is it the normative practice of, of the Bible? No, it is not the normative practice of the Bible. We, could, we should be okay to pray to Jesus, but our focus should be on praying to the Father through the whole, through through Jesus, our, our advocate, and the power of the Holy Spirit. We even, as the Bible says, when we don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit will intercede for us with groans and moans to the Father. He takes that to the Father for us, so he does that. So hopefully that helps you in answering that question. No, it's not wrong, but no, it's not the typical normal practice to do it uh, pre predominantly that way. Once again, we're at take a break time. And if you have questions that you would like to ask me, well, I take a break once a week to respond to them. You can either Facebook message me, private message me on Facebook, or you can send me a, an email at Pastor Brant Nasmark at gmail.com. Brant Nasmark at gmail.com. But until then, we see you next. You're on again next week. Have a great week and may you know the Lord's many blessings to you at this time.